In this video tutorial, we're going to show how supports work in Adapt Builder. These might be point or line supports that are either automatically or manually created by the user and mainly to support columns and walls. And we'll talk about single level and multi-level defaults and how supports are considered in both modes of operability. And we're going to go ahead and be working with a multi-level structure in the program. The first thing we want to discuss is just visibility. How do we show supports when they're created either automatically or manually? So if we go to visibility under view settings, you can always look at supports from the finite element tab using the point and line support option. We're going to uh, not be discussing springs. Those are always manually created supports. So if you add springs to a model, the only time they're not considered is if, if you remove them, if you delete them. The visibility for springs is also shown in the same finite element tab here. So point and line supports, what we're going to be discussing today in more detail. Um, you can also turn on supports from model, and there's this visibility tab, and we'll go ahead and look at that. That's this tab right here, and the column here is for point and line supports. And we also have, again, springs shown here. So these are the, the, the quick icons you can select to turn on the viewing of them. Now, before we actually create supports or look at them, we're going to talk about two different modes. We have basically multi-level mode. That's this button here. And then we also have this one called single level mode. Depending on which mode you're in, dictates how the program stabilizes and supports the structure. So for example, if I run this model in multi-level mode, notice that at the base of the columns and walls, and I can isolate those using, again, visibility under model, I'll turn off, um, in this case, let's turn off the slab view, I'll turn off the opening view, and I'm going to go ahead and hide these ramps, I'll just hide those as well. I'll also turn off the uh, beams. Okay, so we're looking at basically walls and columns. You'll notice I have two walls here that are not auto-filled with the shading, so I can just go back to visibility and reset that. Okay, so we have a stack of walls and columns, and if we go to uh, criteria under analysis and design options, we want to pay particular attention to this block of information here. This allows the user to set how columns and walls, the far ends, are restrained depending on what mode of operability you're in. You're either in single level, again, here, or you are in multi-level. If I toggle this, that's the multi-level button here. Right now, we're in multi-level. We're seeing the entire structure. Therefore, we're working in multi-level mode. When we run the model, in multi-level, the default support condition is fixed, fixed. Okay, that's for rotation and translation. What does that mean? That means that the program will auto-stabilize the structure at the onset of analysis. It doesn't require any input by the user other than setting up these default conditions. If you want to change them, you, you can. Now, let's say I wanted to do a hinge support at the base. I would do user defined and deselect rotation. And if I do this, then the program will auto-restrain everything based on this. If I go back to fix fixed, it changes the default. Um, the, so, so fixed fix is the default condition for multi-level analysis. If we go to single level, the default is a roller support and rotationally fixed. We fix it rotationally about x, y, z, and we only support it vertically fixed in the z direction for translation. Similar to multi-level, you can manipulate how the program auto-restrains under single level by just modifying this input. There's one important selection here also made. This, this checkbox says retain user modification and create the rest as selected below. So what does that mean? That means after the program has auto-restrained the, the model, if the user changes any support, that support remains in place until the user changes it back manually or until it is deleted 
and the user allows the program to auto restrain it during the next analysis cycle. So we'll give, give you an example here. If I leave these as is, okay, we're going to go and, and just go ahead and, and analyze this global structure. Before we actually analyze, we can create the supports. We can auto stabilize the supports. So if I go to model and I just say create supports, the program will add supports. I'm going to just view them. Okay, they're, they're turned on in view now. And you can see there's line supports at the base of the walls. They should be fix fixed because we're in multi-level mode and at the base of columns, fix fixed. These are all 100% auto stabilized. If I run the analysis, it's going to assume those conditions. You'll notice right here, we have a column above the base that's actually supported. So if we look at that, this is fixed in Z and rotationally fixed. Why are these shown? These are shown because the last single level analysis was performed at this level here, level plane six. So those supports will be automatically removed once we analyze the structure in multi-level mode. I'm going to go back to multi-level mode. We'll go ahead and I'm going to analyze this for just one combination. We'll just do a gravity combination, service total. And we'll say OK. And you'll notice the program will remove those supports. And then it will support the base of the structure per the default, which is fix fixed. And it will run through the analysis based on those support conditions. Okay, so the program runs through the analysis. It's meshed everything. You can see the, the, the ramp meshing over here. It solves this and we get fixity at the base. Notice the supports are no longer shown. We can again turn those off, uh, or turn those off on rather, um, in terms of visibility using these options here. So this is a this is a solution based on fix fixed at the base. Um, now let's say I want my columns to be hinged, but my walls to be fixed. In that case, we have a mixed system which will require manual modification. So in this case, I'm going to go back to, uh, and let, let's just check this. If we look at a, a column, this should still be fixed, fixed per the default values. I'll go back to criteria. And in this case, I'm going to change this to hinged. Oops, let me do that for, for a multi-level. And then for single level, Go back to roller support rotationally fixed. That's the default out of the box default. This is my new default for multi-level. If I go ahead and I don't have to create these now. Again, the program will auto restrain them when we analyze. If I if I do this initially, this should change to a hinge at the columns and walls. So we'll go back to this column. You can see it's now hinged. It's released rotationally, and the same thing is true for the line supports. So now I'm going to modify these manually. I'm going to select all of my line supports. And this is a manual modification. So the program will, ret will retain this until I modify it back or until I just delete and allow the program to reassign per the, per the defaults. So let's select those supports. I'll go to modify the selection under um, line support, we're going to call this fixed. Okay, this is again a, 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 man, a manual modification. Now, if I reanalyze this, columns are hinged, the walls are now fixed. How do I reassign this? Notice if I go back and I use this option again, create supports. Okay, the program readjusts the supports per the defaults. These should also be uh, continue to be hinged. Notice that the manually adjusted supports in the core walls will be fixed. Fixed. This is again that manual modification that I made. Until I delete them, will they not take on the default again? So, if I um, select these again, for example, maybe I'll just select these three here. 
I delete those, I come back and allow the program to restrain when we analyze or just do this up front, these will now be hinged. These will retain their fixity for global, uh, for translation and rotation. So these are now hinged again per the default. And again, these ones are fixed. Okay, so that's how the supporting works in multi-level mode. If I go to single level, single level, the program takes on the characteristics of your settings for single level. So this is rotationally fixed and roller support. Again, if I if I go to model and generate the supports just to review them before analysis and check one of these, it's roller support and rotationally fixed. Now let's say I want to manually modify this. So we're, we're running through single level analysis runs and I say, well, I want this to be fixed at the base. So we're going to make a manual modification in single level mode. And we'll go ahead and um, modify the selection. Okay, we're going to fix this. And this should now be fixed, fixed. If I go back, for example, to multi-level mode, we still kind of see those supports at that level six above and below. That's okay. We can go back and just readjust and reassign in global mode. But one thing to note is that the supports that we adjusted manually at the single level, uh, level six, those will not be removed. They're they're manually adjusted supports that have to be deleted when we go back to global mode. So again, if I run this analysis as an example, notice that these supports right here did not get deleted because those were manually adjusted in single level. And there was actually a few pre-processing checks there that the program circled and made. Um, and it's basically saying we have to remesh that, that structure uh, where we added those supports. So those must be deleted if you make manual modification in single level and go back to global mode, make sure you readjust or just delete. If I just simply delete these, come back and analyze in global mode, the program will auto-stabilize the base of walls and columns, and this should run just fine. Okay, so if there are any questions, uh, please contact us at support at adaptsoft.com, and we'd be happy to give you a hand with any models or questions that you have. Thank you.